Okay, so this is going to be a big one. You need two pieces of chipboard, nine by 12, one piece, two by 12. I'm going to actually set that one aside. To wrap this, you're going to want two pieces, seven by 11, two pieces, eight by 11. Okay, so I'm going to set one of each of these aside and one of those aside. And I'm going to grab a scoreboard. Okay, so this is of course going to be longer than, I'm going to start with my smaller piece, okay, so I'm going to put this in my scoreboard, lined up in the corner, okay, this piece the way I've got my score tape on here, six and six, we're going to pull one half off. If you're using sheets, I would suggest cutting it to six inches wide to put on the back of this. I, I prefer the rolls, especially when I'm at home. So mine, I used a six inch roll. Okay. So I'm going to put that down like so. Okay. That's all just like we always do, okay? This piece is gonna go on like this, but before we do that, I am going to take, let me just make sure this is lining up the way I want it to. It is, okay. But I don't think I wanna do what I was thinking, all right. So now we're going to take our other piece, get the backing off, because I've kind of changed, the last time I did a really big, like, you know, over, the, the size of the chipboard album was, oh my gosh, probably three years ago. And I've kind of changed how I do it since. So you're going to notice that this is loose. That's okay. We don't want to deal with that yet. We don't want to bulk this up by putting tape in here. Because when we wrap this, we're going to wrap it pretty much like we always do. Okay. Once we get it wrapped and it's tight, it's not going to matter that this isn't glued down. But if you wanted to, after it's wrapped, like stick your tip of your glue in there and get a little bit of glue in, you could. Because keep in mind, this is going to get matted that you're never going to know and it's not going to cause a problem without this little like center section being tacked down. Okay, so I'm going to put that one to the side. I'm going to grab my second one. And again, we're starting with the smaller of the two. splitting your score tape into two six inch wide sections is going to make this way easier. Okay, so there we go, we're on one half. Our other half. And there we go. Now, the only difference between the cover pieces and the spine is just the one and a half inch on the side, okay? So this is two inches by 12. So our two pieces are five inches by seven and five inches by eight. So I'm gonna start with the five by seven so that we're consistent with how we're doing this. This one, I forgot to split my tape, which is fine because I'm only going to pull this halfway down, just like that, just fold it over, except this needs to be turned the other way, or I go and put this down completely wrong, 
because that'd be about right. Okay. So again, I'm just putting this down just like I normally would. I'm going to take my second piece and again, get it in there with the spacers, pull the rest of that off, line it up, and down we go. Okay, so put the spacers away and actually leave that out just off to the side. All right, so wrapping. Let's start with our covers. Okay, so this overlaps. We want to wrap these three pieces first. So I'm going to fold this over just like always. Burnish that down. And you're, there's not really a way to fold this over without getting both pieces, but really don't burnish this end yet because we'll, we'll do this part second, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna keep that folded in. Miter. And miter. And then fold this over and miter again. Then that gets my corners. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my quarter inch score tape. Hopefully not clogged. It's a miracle. Okay, so I'm gonna do my end first. I'm gonna run along there and there. Ah. And down. Okay. Then I can do my two side pieces. Again, just like normal, a little along the edge of the chipboard, a little bit in the middle there, up against the chipboard, over and down. Okay. And one more time. Up against the chipboard. And be careful when you're going at it that direction that you don't push this into that other piece of cardstock and tear it because ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, so now we'll go ahead and fold our other pieces around. Again, and this is where you're going to kind of want to watch to make sure it lays down flat. So you may have to kind of help it when you go to fold this around so that it doesn't bubble up. See how this is bubbled? I don't want it to do that, so I need to push that down flat underneath there and then burnish, okay? So again, we're gonna miter. One thing I am going to do on this is I am going to put a little bit of tape right there 
just so that when this comes up and over, it grabs really well on that piece. This top part, it's not going to matter because you're going to have it. It's going to go down just like always. But I want to make sure that this little side down here grabs. Okay, so we're going to start with this end again. up really burnish this up and then over and down and then that should just be perfectly smooth right there okay I'm gonna do it again your first one like I said you can't even tell that that's not glued down because it sits nice and flat you could pull it up if you wanted to and if you wanted to run a bead of glue in there you could but again it's gonna get matted it's not gonna be necessary okay I'm gonna set that one to the side we'll do our second one and again we're starting with the piece that's or the side that has the piece underneath I'm being good so far today and remembering to actually put the lid back on my glue instead of letting it sit here and get all clogged. Because <laughs> as you know, this is how that usually, that's usually what happens around here. Okay. Ah, okay, so this is, let me get this side down and then I'll show you what I just noticed. Not that it matters, but just, you know, so if it happens to you, you're not going to worry. Okay. This side, this piece is slightly off center. This slide, side was slightly under, the side slightly over. Because of the way we wrap the albums this way, with the, with the lay flat method, it literally does not matter. Okay. Just, you know, something I wanted to show you. It just means that when I went to stick that piece or this bigger piece down, it just means that um, it just slid slightly when I was putting it down. But because of how we're doing this, ultimately it's not gonna matter. Okay, so again, I wanna make sure that that comes around flat before we burnish. 
We don't want it bubbled. We want it to lay flat. again. Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. And again, we're going to start with this end. And glue up against the chipboard, over and down, and then again on the sides. process for the hinge is going to be basically the same. The only difference, I'm not hinge, spine, spine, not hinge. <laughs> hinge comes later. Um, the only difference being that you're not going to be folding these sides around. Okay. So again, this one sat up a little more than I would have liked, but it's still okay. It'll get matted over and ultimately it will not matter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fold our ends first because that's the part that we're truly most concerned with because that's the part that's actually going to get folded over and so on and so forth. So at this point, normally I would fold the sides in. I'm not going to do that this time, okay? I'm going to take it just like this. I mean, if anything, I'm just going to fold just kind of feel for where I kind of want to actually do this where my chipboard actually is okay so I've got that folded over and burnished and I'm just going to kind of come in here like so okay and just kind of mark where that is so I know where to miter from can fold this up and miter again. Okay. And that one came out really ugly, but it's okay. <laughs> um, again, we're going to get tape. You know, maybe we should have gone ahead and folded that all the way down. I didn't, but I think it'll be okay. Except I need to clean up where I mitered that. Because it got weird. Okay. down okay so really at this point if you hadn't mitered it enough along the top here you could fix it at this point okay so I'm gonna come over here and again I'm just gonna kind of burnish about where I need to start my mitering I think this time I'm going to do what I would never, normally when I miter, I would never cut in 
but I think in this case it's not going to matter because I'm just cutting along my little fold line there. And that came out much cleaner. Not that it matters because it's getting folded over and covered up and you know all that fun stuff anyway so really not a big deal but I don't want to fold my sides in at this point. All right, so over and down. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna turn it so my little piece that's on top because I'm gonna burnish along here and I don't wanna catch that piece. So as I burnish along the side of my chipboard, I just wanna be able to go in one direction right along the edge of that chipboard to kind of work that over, okay, like so. Then, we can fold it, okay? Could you do that on the cover pieces? Absolutely, you could. And then we'll burnish it one more time, okay? Do the same thing on the other side. This time I'm gonna come towards myself because I don't wanna be pushing this way and end up catching on that edge where that overlaps, okay? Fold. Come back and one more time. Okay, so now we've got our cover, our spine. This time I am going to glue just in here on top of the chipboard. Okay, now. some stuff out of the way here. I am going to come down both sides of this with the score tape just like I normally would overlapping where that cardstock or going across where that cardstock overlaps. I promise I know what I'm trying to say. Okay. I'm going to grab my scoreboard again. Okay, I'm going to put this in like so. I'm going to grab a cover and we're going to go ahead and attach this just like we always do. Okay, what I'm going to try to do is keep that seam across the same all the way across. So when I do this piece, I'll do this so that that seam is even all the way across. Okay. In fact, let me turn this upside down just so I can kind of see better where it is I'm lining up at. Okay. And glue. All right. So the top of my scoreboard, side of my scoreboard in this case. No, this is actually my top. How about that? To line this up. You don't want it flush against that that uh, spine. You want about, okay, fake nails, about a fake nail's tips. <laughs> it's been a long week. That literally made no sense to anybody except my exhausted weekend brain. <laughs> maybe a, a 16th to a 32nd of an inch space between the edge of the chipboard on the spine and the edge of your cover. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that out. I'm going to leave that crazy in there because this is, you know, pretty much my default setting anymore, it seems like. Okay, same thing again. You can either have coherent Jennifer or you can have not coherent Jennifer who actually puts the cap back on her glue. Take your pick. Okay. So again, make sure this is lined up at the top. Flat at the top. And down we go. Okay. I'm going to carefully slide this out. I don't want to move it, move it just yet. Um, 
because I don't want to have that slip out of alignment. It shouldn't because of the tape, but just to be safe. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of burnish on that a little bit. Flip it over. Again, just kind of burnish. Okay. And there we go. Now, you'll see when I close that, that kind of stands up. Again, not going to be an issue because we're going to go ahead and put our normal reinforcement piece that I'm wishing I could have, should have done a little bit wider, but that's okay. So this is six by 11 and seven eighths. Cover it completely with score tape. Okay, I'm going to line this up. Finally, I can burnish over the entire thing because I have no edges that I'm going to catch on. Okay, so we're going to fold. over. Just burnish that a little bit. Fold. Burnish again. And then I'm going to fold it all the way over. And I'm going to pinch just because that's how I make sure that my spine is lined up the way I want it to be. I've got trying to kind of lift right here for me. I'm not sure why. Probably not enough glue. And there's our cover. 12 by 9. How about that? Okay, let me get pages, hinges, page elements, etc., etc., ready to go, and I'll be back. Okay, so for the shaker frame, I've got the inner piece of my embroidery hoop pulled out. I'm just going to hold this down on my acetate and with a fresh blade in my craft knife, I'm just going to very carefully go around the outside edge of that uh, inner piece of the embroidery hoop. I'm not going to try and do the whole thing at once. I'm kind of doing it in sections because I can still come in and trim up edges as I need to. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to get this other side and then of course it moved on me and I finally decided it was going to be easier to just pick this up and turn it over, turn it around and move it. Um, at least I think that's what I decided to do. I don't know. This was like a week ago. <laughs> um, yeah, no, decided to go ahead and just line it back up and keep going. Um, so don't think you need to do this like all in one pass. And if it slides a little bit, it's fine. You're going to be able to fix it um, after the fact. So when I moved the thing, for the most part, it cut through pretty much all the way around. I had a couple little areas where I missed like a, just a tiny, tiny spot, like a, you know, a hair's width of a spot or it didn't quite go all the way through which I don't think I actually did switch my blade out on this. I think I meant to, but then didn't because of course that's, you know, let's make this difficult, Jennifer. Um, so uh, I'm just getting the areas where it didn't go all the way through. Um, and then we can of course come back and clean this up after we get it lined up again with um, the top of that inner portion of the um, embroidery hoop. So I'm just continuing to go along and get those edges that where it didn't quite go through, but I've got the line I can follow by going through, going around it with the knife initially. Um, I at least know where it is that I need to to cut. And I know this is very hard to see and I apologize. There's not an easy way to do this um, to show you. 
And because, of course, I wanted to be difficult and do something different, this isn't, you know, a typical round album where I could have just taken, or round embroidery frame, where I could have just taken, you know, the circle cutter and done it that way, which admittedly would have been a thousand times easier, but it wasn't, it didn't look quite right. I did actually explore doing it that way, <laughs> but I just liked this so much better, so... All right, so there we've got our piece. I'm just gonna lay it on here, get it lined up, and then just kind of trim anywhere that is hanging over. But for the most part, I'm almost spot on. I've got a little bit in a couple of places that I'm just gonna lay this down and just trim around. Okay, so I'm sure at this point you've watched my the portion where I was trimming the acetate to fit on the frame that I'm sure was accompanied by a terrible voiceover because with me, is there really any other kind? So what I've done, because of course it wasn't exact, I've lined up the two spots that are pretty much perfect and taped it down. And now I'm just going to kind of push down from the top and then just go around and trim off these little pieces that are kind of hanging out over where they need to be. Shouldn't be a whole lot that we have to do. And really that's just going to kind of depend on how sharp your knife was, if you were able to get this to stay in one place. I probably should have changed the blade out in this before I did it, but I didn't, so here we are. But even then, I still, I've just got a couple places where I need to just slice off a, just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so that's good. So what I'm going to do next, flip this back over, I'm going to take this off, and set it to the side, and I'm going to take this and my red line tape, wherever it is. Okay. I'm going to use the red line tape because I think it will stick better. Um, and I'm just going to run it around the outside edge of this frame once I put it back in the other frame. Because I like the wood on this, and I'm going to leave that. And then what we'll do to cover up this obnoxious white part is either some thick um, kind of jute twine or something. We'll, we'll do something around that so it's not so... You know, oh, look at me. I'm a bright white frame. Which, of course, is not what we want. So, I am going to go ahead and line this up on here. I'm going to start over where I don't have little gluey fingerprints on this. Maybe. <laughs> you know it's me we're talking about here this is probably gonna be a train wreck so but you guys keep coming back so <laughs> we'll just go with it okay so this is quarter inch red line tape and I'm just gonna kind of and it's gonna bubble up a little bit I'm just kind of pushing it down when it does, I want to go all the way out around this white edge. I didn't dare try and, because like regular glue, there's no way. 
hot glue, yeah, maybe. Um, but again, it was not ideal, honestly, that, you know, to attach this to the front of the book, honestly, we're probably going to end up having to use, um, like E6000 or something. I don't think the glue gun's going to cut it. But we want this ready to put the acetate on top after we have put this on the book and um, built up our scene inside and added our shaker elements. I thought about doing this as another one with like lights in it. I really toyed with doing that, but ultimately decided that was going to be make something that was already going to be kind of a involved project that much harder. Okay. So I'm just going to come back around with my bone folder and burnish all of these edges down. Um, I did actually try, I had some really thin acetate that I wouldn't normally use for a shaker, but I thought maybe I could lay it over this and then just pop that frame down over the top of it and hold it in that way. It did not work. So in case you're questioning why we're doing it this way, that's why that had been my original plan and it did not work <laughs> okay so there's that and I'm gonna leave that on there like so okay so here's our cover and this is why we're doing this so we can lay this completely flat because what we're gonna do for the inside is not gonna be like we'll build our pages before we actually put them on the hinge so that that's not an issue when we go to get to that piece um, but I just need to kind of line this up where it's going to go. And of course I forgot to turn on the glue gun. I think I want the little glue gun. So I got a new glue gun, actually. Turn on my normal one. So this is the glue pen and you kind of hold it more like a pen and it has the tiniest tip on this. I used this on, um, what did I use this on the other day? Something. What was I doing? Something the other day that I needed just, oh, I know. I put the button closure on my um, doodle bug project the other day with this, and I was able to just get just a perfect little mound of glue, and it comes in this really cool little holder. And it's a USB chargeable, so, and it was like 50 bucks. So as opposed to this one with the battery and the charger and everything is like a hundred and something. Um, so it's a nice alternative. Okay, I'm gonna let this, the glue gun heat up and I will be back. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna grab big glue gun and we are gonna just glue our little hearts out here and we gotta work fast so that it doesn't cool off and set before we get all the way around this thing and did I just run out of glue in this I think I just did oh my gosh okay it's okay you're going to center this up. It almost runs top to bottom because it's like eight and a half by 12. It says it's actually slightly under 12. Thankfully, or we wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give that a few minutes to set. I may have to come back around in a couple of areas and just kind of spot some glue in there, but that's okay. So what I have over here, is some fussy cut elements. Not that, and not that, and yeah, maybe that. And the pirate ship, and I could fussy cut out that moon, but I don't think I'm going to. 
All right, so what I want to do is we're going to kind of seam build here, okay? So this, we are actually going to put more towards the bottom, like so. So I'm going to just kind of, I actually meant to check this before I got the rest of this put together, but that's okay. And of course, here comes my son with his friends. Okay, so I'm just kind of marking and we're just going to kind of freehand this around. It doesn't have to be super exact. Okay, so that's closer. Like I said, I should have done that ahead of time. I think I have a workaround. Hold on one minute. I promise I'm smart. Hello, I have a piece cut. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> you know, there are days. This is apparently going to be one of them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line this up on my edge here, figure out where it needs to actually go, and I've lost my pencil. There it is. Okay, I'm just going to kind of draw along that edge so I know where I need to trim. I remembered that that was my plan first. It saved us a whole lot of hassle, but that's okay. It happens. Okay. So this is going to go back in here. Actually, I'm not going to use that one. I'm not liking that. Just kidding. All right. So our ship it's going to come in here. I need to find my black foam tape. Somewhere here. Here it is. Okay. So I'm going to get black foam tape on the back of this. And yes, this was not fun to fussy cut. I'll just tell you that right now. Okay. end up using really probably more than I need but I just kind of I want to make sure, kind of stabilize this as I do it and that's going to be quite honestly the easiest way to do that okay um do I have small black squares I think I do hold on Okay, so I have tiny black squares that I'm going to put on the backs of my flags to reinforce them and pop them up. And there. And there. And I know I have more of them here somewhere. Oh, maybe not tiny ones. No, nope, no more tiny ones. Okay. That's okay though. We'll just cut one of these in half like so. And that's not quite working like I wanted to either. That's okay. Um, one more here. And then a piece over here. And of course this is completely optional. It would be super cute using the um, treasure map page that's in there and doing something with that one instead. I actually kind of toyed with this, but I tend to kind of get in my head, oh, this is how I'm, how I'm going to do this. 
and I make myself crazy trying to make it work. <laughs> I literally like was on a roll with this on Friday and I got to the part of how am I going to do this shaker and I literally spent all weekend trying to find an embroidery hoop or something to do this with. I didn't want to do, you know, layers of chipboard or layers of foam tape or, you know, just a normal, you know, I mean, I, I could have gone with just a normal shaker and you absolutely could go with a normal shaker, but I was really like, it needs to be something different. Okay. So I'm doing two layers of the foam tape on here. And I'm going to do a little bit on top of that. I hope if I take the backing off of those just so that the foam tape is the same height on these as it is on the other pieces. Now, the other thing I'm going to do before I line this up in here and put it down, and you'll see, you kind of see a little bit of the ship over here. What I'll end up doing is doing some embellishing on top of this over here to kind of mask where that is. Um, and then I had this piece I actually fussy cut out of the, the rest of it that I could kind of tuck that down in there like so and mask more of it, which is exactly what I think I'm going to do. However, I'm going to do it flat or am I going to pop it up just a little bit? Line this up about where it goes. Figure this out. Because I think I do want to pop it up. But to do so, I do need to trim just a tiny bit. Like so. Okay. Okay. There we go. And then we will get the black foam tape. I'm going to do one layer this time because it's going to sit behind our ship. But before I take the backing off of this, I am going to take my powder tool and I'm going along the sides of my foam tape. Okay, This is so that it doesn't end up sticking like whatever we end up putting in here for the shaker fill doesn't end up sticking okay so there's that piece this piece is going to go right here like so and i'm going to do the same thing again with the powder tool Apologize. I'm probably going to end up having to do a voiceover because they're out there playing Mario Kart, but it's one of his friends that I haven't seen for a while because he's been busy. So, all right. So let's go ahead, get the back and off of the big pieces. I will do the flags last after the main part of this is down. So this is going to go like so, and then I can fold that back because that was, like I said, incredibly difficult to cut anyway, 
and there we go. Okay, so the other pieces I have left are some of the waves for down here. And I don't know if I have two of those, maybe not. Because I would kind of like it to sit like that. So again, I'll line up my piece here. Kind of figure out about where that needs to go. And mark. It's not food time, Gus. You got an hour, buddy. It's okay. Okay. So now I need to decide if I am popping this up. Oh, I need to go in just a bit more. There we go. Okay. So I am going to pop this up as well. but I'm going to test where this is sitting to figure out where I need additional tape. Okay, like so, and then down on this end, about right there. So from this end down here, just because this hangs off the end of the ship, we're going to stack up three layers. So then again, powder tool on those edges. It's just going to help so that not so much shaker fill ends up getting stuck. Which, I mean, it gets stuck no matter what you do, quite honestly, but this helps a little bit. Okay. So, honestly, this is coming out exactly like I hoped it would. I'm excited. Okay. All right. So I need something down there or we can leave it open and then just embellish. Ooh, wait. Okay. Let's clean that just a little bit. that entire edge cut. No wonder. Hmm. Okay, so that one, honestly, I think I'm going to leave it because I'll do another embellishment along the bottom. Okay. Shaker fill. Be right back. Okay, so shaker fill. Literally, I just mixed like three different things I had in my stash over there. Um, all Michaels, because I wasn't finding a buttons galore when I liked. But I think this combination will be good. 
So get that all in there. And then I'm going to grab my shaker front. Okay. And I want rubbing alcohol to start with. And I have pieces of my shaker mix everywhere. So I am gonna take just rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and I'm gonna wipe down the back side of my shaker top. Okay. I'm gonna turn it over and try and figure out where our tape started and ended. <laughs> Very good question. I know I was on the side. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pull part of it up, but not all of it. I'm going to take my other tape off. Maybe. down on where I don't have the tape pulled up yet and get it lined up there and then start working my way around. Okay, it's down. Now I am going to burnish around here, like so. Very carefully. There we go, that works better doing it with that end and doing it from the side like that. Okay. I sincerely hope they are not as loud on camera as they sound to me just standing in here. Okay, I'm going to get the front of this again, because this side we did not do with the alcohol. So if you ever get like glue or something on your acetate, rubbing alcohol. Okay, so before it is all embellished and so on and so forth, there is our pirate ship shaker front. <laughs> I'm so excited it worked. Okay. I'll be back with inside elements. Okay, let's go ahead and make our hinge. So for the hinge, you need a piece 11 and a half by five and a half. I cut this just a little bit short of 11 and a half so that when we put our page bases on there, it's not gonna be too tall, okay? So we are literally gonna score this every half an inch all the way across. So one half, one, one and a half, maybe. I can keep it in line. Two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. Okay. So you're going to have these two together, skip one. These two, skip one. These two, skip one. These two. So I'm actually going to start more towards the middle. Okay. And the reason for that is because of the length of this, I want to make sure that as I start this, it's starting straight so that I'm not wider on one end than the other. Okay. So I know these two, in fact, where's my pencil? Okay, so hinge, hinge, gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. Hinge, hinge, okay? I'm gonna start folding halfway across. And as I do this, I'm gonna make sure that I'm lined up even on both ends. I'm going to start from the middle and burnish out. Okay. And then I'm going to go back.
back the other way and again out. Okay, so now I can go to the one on the other side. So again, hand change gusset, hand change gusset. So I'm going to go on this side now, pull this one over and make sure we're nice and even. And I'm going to fold it back the other way. Okay. All right. So we've got the middle section. We know at this point it's going it's even. Okay. So I'm going to do the next the first hinge out. So I'm going to fold that. I'm going to make sure everything is still lined up straight and I'm going to burnish that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and put glue. I don't want to get too carried away because when we burnish this down, you always end up with some squeezing out. So again, I'm going to start in the middle and burnish out. I'm going to go back and forth over that a couple of times. Okay. I'm going to let it sit for just a minute, give everything time to really grab on. And then we can fold it back. So starting in the middle helped us get this lined up exactly the way it needs to go. So now I can stand this up and over and burnish it down the other way. And there's our first hinge. Okay. I'm going to go back to the other side now. Okay, so we've got our gusset, we've got our first hinge, so now we've got two gussets next to each other. Okay, I'm going to do this one. And again, I'm going to fold that over, make sure it's lined up, start in the middle, and burnish out. Okay, and then glue. Again, we're getting enough, but not getting too carried away. All right, lay that back down, and then burnish out and out. Literally just had a paper towel. Where to go? There it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so again, I can fold because I pre-folded my center, I can fold this back out flat and then stand this one up and fold it over and burnish it the other direction now. Okay, and now we can do our two ends. So, same basic idea, fold this over. glue okay. I'll do go ahead and do my other side before I stand that one up. So I'm going to fold those back the other direction. And then over and down. Burnish out from the middle. <clears throat> and then glue. down. Everything is still nice and straight. And again, nice and straight. And there we have our hinge. So I'm going to fold those in and burnish. 
and burnish and then you really can just sit and you know flatten it and burnish both directions and then flip it back the other way and really work it to get those fibers good and broken in so that it turns nicely when you put it in the book so I'm not going to glue it in just yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to mat on the spine underneath it so I'm going to just set this to the side and we're going to look at our page faces so four hinges four pages four pieces eight and a half by eleven and a half I'm going to set those to the side four pieces nine by twelve <clears throat> The nine by 12 pieces put over here so I don't push them off the back side of the table we are going to score at half an inch turn it and score it half an inch again okay you're gonna do that on all four pieces on all of these is I am going to miter my corners. So up here, we're going to take a little piece off there. We're going to take a little piece off there. And then we're going to go across where the score line intersect like that. And I'm going to do this on all four pieces. I end up just with how I turned it apparently. Two going one way, two going the other, which ultimately doesn't matter. That's okay. Okay. Since these both go the same way, I'm going to do it both at the same time. And I'm only going to do one with you right now because we'll be putting them in the book later after we've added, you know, our flaps and whatnot. Okay, so the way I want to do this is I want to put the long side down. So I'm going to take on the long side and I'm going to fold this over. And again, I'm going to burnish from the middle out because it is a long score line and we want it to be nice and straight. I'm going to line this up on top. Or actually you could do it to the inside if you wanted to. I'm sorry, to the outside that is. Like that. I I don't know. I, I don't have good luck with that. I know Tamara does it like that all the time because they do go together easier. I don't know why, but I have a harder time with that. So what I will do is get glue on my tab and line up in this corner up here. So basically, I'm gonna kind of stand it up, line it up to the top, and then push it down. And burnish that down and there is a page base 
Okay. So I will do that with the other four. And I will be back with elements for the pages and then we will get them in the book. Okay, so I've gone ahead and matted my inside. Um, spine is going to go ahead and just go in here and I'll glue that in in a minute. Nothing, you know, exciting there. I matted underneath it and honestly the way this is going to fit in here it probably wasn't necessary, but um, I went ahead and did that anyway. So I'm going to move this to the side <clears throat> for now. I guess. And we are going to work on our first element. So we are going to do, I'm sure it has an actual name, but um, we're going to do a little pop-up for the inside front cover. So I'm using the um, matching solids from the collection. I don't know where my camera has got moved again. I've got to just unclip my thing there because I have it I don't know. Every time I move my light, there's my camera. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> so I'm not like stretching out. Okay, so we need one piece, six by 12. We're going to score this at six inches. Okay, I use the cream and red. Cream's going to go on the outside. I've got another piece for my closure that is six by one and a half, again, of that same one. I'm not sure where this needs uh, scored yet, so I'm just going to set that aside for right now. And then I've got two pieces of the blue and orange. One of them is six by eight, scored at four inches. The other is six by eight and a half, scored at four and eight. So what I'm going to do is I've gone ahead and folded these. So this little half inch tab, you're going to fold down. So towards this other side, this one you're going to fold up and over. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put that color back to back. And if you're using solids, then, you know, line it up eh, appropriately. Um, and I'm going to make sure that everything is lined up exactly. I'm going to put my glue on here and I'm going to fold the tab over as opposed to putting it under. And the reason for this is because of how this is going to go into our little piece here, I don't want there being that raw white edge showing when it opens up. Okay. So now I'm going to fold this whole thing down flat. And burnish it down. And this is going to go in here. It's going to fit side to side like this. And we're going to glue it so that when it opens, it pops up like so. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on that side. I'm going to line this up in here. I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch, make sure I'm good top to bottom. I'm going to close this down on top of it. And again, this is where we want to make sure that it's fully inside and not hanging out on either side. Okay. So then this will open up like so. I think from the looks of it, we're going to need about an eighth of an inch gusset in this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to score this at, I'm trying to think how much of that I want to come over the front. Let's go two inches and two and one eighth. Okay. So before I finish attaching this, oh, actually it doesn't matter because this is going to go on the back side. Never mind. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So let's go ahead and get our glue on our back piece here. Flip this over and burnish it down. So then this will open up like so. 
me just slightly over on there. Okay. All right. So then this piece, I am just going to wrap it around, center it up, and just glue this on the back. Okay. And let's come over just a teensy bit to the side. There we go. All right. So then I'm going to go ahead and add in my magnets. Because I need tape that is hidden behind foam tape. <laughs> so, grab one. I'm going to put it about right there. And then I'm going to get my second one. smaller piece of tape on that time. Get that lined up. Fold that over, tack it down. And then I'm going to just lift this up and trim it just a little bit. Because it was still longer than I needed it to be. But that's okay. It happens. Okay. Okay, what are you trying to eat down here, Gus? Stop it. All right, so then I am going to grab my book. I'm going to center this up, and it's going to open up like so. Okay, I do have my piece that's going on the front cut. This is from the six by six pad. I did fussy cut around it, and honestly, I'm kind of irritated at the moment because let me find the one that's not cut. Notice how the hole is right through the top of this because somehow the alignment on this entire page in this pad is off. And I was like, seriously? It's okay. I fussy cut out the entire little thing and just cut out that little divot. But um, yeah, that just was kind of annoying to say the least. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to... I'm going to just it for one second. Because some of this stuff I am going to end up inking. Not all of it, just some of it. And this one in particular, I think really kind of needs some Is literally like the only one of these I actually have a reinker for is this is the vintage photo and I think fired brick is the other one I have used so much I actually had to get a reinker for it okay here and we can go ahead and glue this down it's just because that cream is a little bit different um, color wise for the cream that's on the stripes here Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it again if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. It's handmade. Okay. We'll go ahead and put our little matte piece on here, and then I'll matte the rest of that later. But this is the entire reason I did get the 6x6 pad with this, which I don't normally do. It's because I knew I was going to do things like this, where I was going to want that smaller paper so all right so that much is in I'll go ahead and glue my spine in here and then we will 
probably do our back inside cover next and then we'll work on our pages. Okay, back inside cover. You need a piece that is eight by eight. We're not gonna do any scoring. And then four pieces that are four by four and a half. You're gonna score all of these at four inches on the four and a half inch side. Or if you put it in that way, half an inch. Um, and then we are going to miter. Our corners okay and then I'm gonna fold and burnish okay so now what I'm gonna do is grab some paper clips here. Okay, I'm gonna wrap that tab. Instead of putting it on top, I'm gonna put it to the back because I think that's gonna make it easier to get these lined up. Okay, that paper clip is not a good one. Um, lined up and so that these edges line up and touch without overlapping without having to trim these down so we're just gonna dry fit all of this in here just like so And that is going to work exactly like I want it to because then they're going to all line up and not overlap and we're not going to have to trim anything. So I'm going to go around one at a time. Can I flip these at this point? Um, that was just mostly to get them in place and make sure I don't need to do any trimming. And I'm going to line this up. Right, this is a time when it would probably be helpful to have my scoreboard because I can get this up in this corner. I can get this all the way up in the corner and make sure it's flush with that outside edge when I glue it down. Okay, so this one's going to go this way. The next one is going to come down the other way. So again, get my glue on that tab. We are going to get this all the way in the corner and secure it down. And then they line up exactly going around the outside. Okay? So this one will go this way. So we're going to do the same thing again. And then our last one will go this way. Okay. So what's going to happen then is these will all lay in like this. I will end up putting a magnet of some kind, possibly two small ones in here. And then I'm gonna take, and I don't know which piece yet, either one of the ephemera pieces or the sticker pieces, um, get the magnet on the back of that, 
lined up here so that when you pull that magnet off, you've got your flaps that come out like this. Okay. This whole assembly is going to go on the back inside cover, just like so. Okay. So I am going to actually wait a minute. I'm not going to glue this down right this second, but this will just go centered back here. And honestly, what I'll probably do is leave a little space open at the top to kind of make a small pocket in the back side of this. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the pages. Okay. So let's build our page elements. So I'm going to start with the front of page one. I've got a couple of pieces of cardstock cut here too that we need to, or I'm sorry, pattern paper. Okay, so first up we have a flap that is six and a half by eleven and a half. With the eleven and a half at the top of your scoreboard, you're gonna score at half an inch. Right there. Okay. We have a piece that is two by six and a half. We're gonna score this at three and one quarter. And we have a piece that is five and a quarter by four and a half. And we are gonna score that one at two and five eighths. Okay. Now, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our page base actually unclip the piece that goes on the back. We're going to start with our flap. So I am going to go ahead and miter, maybe, and miter, and then fold and burnish. So it's up to you which way you want this to open. If you want it to open this way, or you want it to open this way. I think I'm actually going to have mine on this outside edge. So I'm going to go ahead and get glue on this. Turn that sideways. We'll go ahead and put that down. Okay. All right. Now, this is the page with the story on it. And I want to keep this as intact as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my... Trimmer. I want to cut out this element right here, but I don't want to cut all the way through. So this is literally the reason I leave this um, trimmer on hand is because I can line up with that little wire that's in there. If you guys have the Fiskars trimmer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I can use that wire to help me get this cut out perfectly. Now, I could do this with a craft knife if I wanted to. Um, and that would work as well. But I, I don't know. I've been doing it with things like this this way long enough. I feel like I personally can do it better this way. But again, it's personal preference. Okay. So that piece has been removed. This piece will go on the five and a quarter by four and a half inch mat. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. 
and I'm going to put that down on top. Okay. And then when we actually put the mat in the book, this will go down right there, and then you'll have a little flap over that part of the cardstock. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, these other two elements. So I'm going to do my parrot first. again because I would prefer that this stay on more solid surface than um, hanging off the edge to try to do this. Okay, so this one is going to go on this tiny one. So again, I am going to fold and burnish. And I am going to glue him on. side and then we'll cut out our big pirate ship piece as well Right, and there's that piece. I don't remember if I have this piece, if I was going to have it go out. I believe so. So, this ended up being 10 and a half by 11. Okay, 10 and a half by 11. for measuring while I was talking the other night to somebody, huh? Okay. And there we go. All right. So now I'm going to glue that down. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring my page base back in. This one is going to go over here like so, but I do want magnets in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my one on this side goes because we've got more cut out here and I don't want to put it where it's, there's too much bulk underneath it or I'm uh, underneath it over the top of it. So. We're going to do this, we're going to slide this over, and it's going to go about right there. Okay, so now I can go ahead and glue this piece in. I'll mat this other little side, whoops, later on. 
I don't need to do it right this second. So go ahead and and if you have extra paper and you want to um, just cut these pieces out and not you know try to do this this efficiently <laughs> as I cut like three pieces of artisan wrong because of course I did um, by all means you know go ahead and, and do that okay oh crying out loud Telling you, there are days that I'm like, why do I keep doing this? <laughs> and today apparently is going to be one of those days. Okay, so there's where my magnet is. I'm going to go ahead and put that down on top. Fold this over and down. And there we go. And there's our other side. That worked out quite nicely once I figured out my flaps. I refilled my blue bottle last night, so it's like really full and really runny, which happens. It's not a big deal, but okay. That one's down. Okay, so then this one we're just going to glue down right over the top of our spot there. goes down over here same thing and again if you remember my Cartabella dinosaurs album from a couple of years ago this is the same basic idea because this is just one of those papers that just lends itself really well to this to doing this this way um, it's just fun and there we go okay so that is ready to go we can move on to the back side of page two which is going to be aha okay so for this we've got two flaps that we're going to do first Gosh, it's pouring again. Wow. Okay. So two pieces that are 11 and, a half, 11 and a half by four and seven eighths. We're gonna put this with the four and seven eighths at the top of the scoreboard. And we're gonna score this at half an inch. And again at five eighths, okay? So you're gonna have that little eighth inch gusset. You're just going to fold the half inch line at this point. Okay. Grab my page. And this is going to go on this outside edge. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to give that a second to dry and I'm going to do my other side and then we'll fold back on that eighth of an inch. Yeah, we're good. I'm just going to push back to make that other score line kind of pop over. Okay, and we've got our little bit, that little eighth of an inch gusset. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. We have a pocket. Our pocket is going to be five by nine and a half. We're going to score this at half an inch on three sides. Okay. I'm going to miter through where the score lines intercept on this intersect on this bottom corner. Intercept, intersect. I guess it's kind of the same thing. And then miter the tops. and fold and burnish. Okay, this is gonna go down here at the bottom. We wanna dry fit it first to make sure it's short enough that we're not gonna run into our flaps that come up over the top. Everything looks good, so I'm going to start with the bottom. Okay, and okay, so let's go ahead and glue the sides of our pocket down. We need to put the small tip back on here, but I took it off because it kept clocking on me. So we're going to burnish those down. Closure on this. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on this, if I'm going to do some kind of ribbon or if, what I'll probably end up doing is a cut apart on a magnet that you're going to pull off. Um, so I'm going to leave that for now. And our assembly for the first page is done. I'm going to set this aside. I don't want to put it in the book just yet. But this much is, is done, ready to go, so I'm going to set it aside. Okay, so page two front and two back. Okay, I need one more piece for this one that I don't have ready just yet, so let me grab that really quick. Okay, so for the back of page two, we're going to start with our pocket. The pocket is going to be six and a half by nine and a half. You're going to score it at half an inch on three sides. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and mat this because we're going to do a little swing closure for the flap that's going to come down from the top, but we need to make sure that we have this matted first. Um, for the flap that's coming down from the top, you can see I scored this incorrectly a minute ago. Um, this is five and a half by eight with the eight inch at the top. You're going to score this at half an inch. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and miter and miter and I'm not going to worry about this wrong score line just because it's going to get matted over and it's not going to matter. Okay, so I'm going to miter the top parts of my pocket and then I'm going to miter through where my score lines intersect. That does not look straight to me. 
it's fine. Okay. It's just me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, fold my bottom in and burnish. Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to go ahead and glue this on so it has a minute to dry. bottom and burnished. We're going to fold our sides over and burnish. Okay. This is going to go on the front of page two. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and just glue the bottom I'm not going to glue the side yet because I still need to poke a hole in this for the brad for the swing closure. Okay, so this one we're going to fold and burnish. And this is going to go at the top in the middle. I just put this on upside down, didn't I? I did. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, it goes down here. And it actually goes on this side, not that side. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. I'm going to be editing this one until... Forever. Forever and ever I'm going to be editing this one. Okay. <laughs> so that is one thing I will say, and this is why I don't typically do my pages this way is you've got to be very conscious of front back top and bottom okay so this on this side I will we've got stuff that's going on here so ultimately it'll get matted so ultimately it's not going to matter but for this piece that we're trying to to work on it will okay so a little swing closure we're going to have this little parrot on the ship's wheel and I've just got one of the solids that I've die cut with a circle to fit that little guy and now I just need to determine where exactly this needs to go and where did my pokey tool go uh -oh. there it is okay pokey tool <coughs> excuse me okay so this needs to swing down and out of the way okay so really about where I have it right here is good so I've got my hole here I'm gonna go ahead and feed my brad through and this is just a random brad that I've probably had since I started paper crafting like 15 years ago Okay, I'm going to feed that through. I can see where my hole started for it to go through this other, the rest of this. So I'm going to pop that through there. And feed it through there. And then I'm going to flatten this out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is find, well, I had scotch tape over here somewhere, and it's apparently disappeared on me. Okay, don't know where my tape is. So I'm going to actually glue just a scrap of cardstock over the back side of this to make sure that this is, it doesn't catch when there's anything that we're going to put, you might want to put in the pocket there. Okay. So I'm going to 
put that down on there. And then I can go ahead and do the sides of my pocket. And this will come over like so, and that will come over there, and then this will go down on the top. I'm not gonna put this on just yet, I'm just gonna set that aside, but there is the front of page two. Okay, the back side of page two. We have a base pocket piece. That is gonna be 10 and a half by six and a half. We're going to score this at half an inch on the ten and a half side, turn it, score half an inch again on the six and a half inch side. Okay, we're going to miter and miter and then cut through our corner. And then we've got two pockets that are going to sit on top of that. First one is going to be seven by six. So with the seven inch at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score this at half an inch, turn it all the way around, and half an inch again. I'm going to miter just on one end. And set that one aside. And then our bottom pocket is going to be seven by three and a half. So we're going to score that at half an inch, turn, half an inch again, turn, and half an inch again. And then we will miter this one. So top, and then through the score lines. Okay. So before I put this piece down, I'm going to build my pockets. Okay. So I'm going to fold and burnish. And this one, we're going to go ahead and do glue on one side and put it down in this bottom corner. Okay. And this is actually hanging over more than it should. I'm trying to decide ultimately if it's going to matter. It's going to matter a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of force this over a tiny bit more. off just just a hair and it still is because of course it is there we go all right that's better okay so now I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and glue on this side and then I'm gonna run just a line along the bottom here And the reason we didn't do a normal bottom on that pocket is just because um, we don't want any that additional bulk. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish. Okay, and then we're gonna line this up on top here. Make sure it fits right. It seems to be okay. And 
and that will go on top. two pieces and go ahead and attach this to our page. Okay, I'm going to do this long side first. Here's our page two assembly ready to go. All right, let's see where we're at. Ah, okay. So, front of page three. Go ahead and get all of this scored. Set that aside. Okay, we have a base flap that is going to be seven by seven and a half. We want the seven and a half at the top of the scoreboard, and we're going to score at half an inch. Okay. On top of that is going to go Okay. Just making sure I've got this in the right order. We've got a piece that is 6 by 6 and 5 8. We want the 6 and 5 8 at the top of the scoreboard. We're going to score half an inch and five eighths of an inch. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and miter. And fold and burnish. Actually, I'm going to miter this one too so it's ready to go. So this is going to go in, okay, so this is the part that's going to go against the hinge. This is our outside edge. This is going to go down. In fact, let's go ahead and put this down. I think I'm going to confuse you guys and myself less if I kind of do this as we go. Okay, so this is our 7x7 seven seven base flap. Okay, I'm just going to center this on this outside edge. Okay. And this piece is going to go on top of this also to that outside edge. Okay. just going to center it on top of that flap. Okay, we're not going to fold back our 5 8 gusset just yet. We're going to wait until this is dried. Okay, then I've got a piece that is six inches by four and five eighths. 
four and five eighths at the top. We're gonna score this at half an inch and five eighths. We're gonna miter and fold just the half inch and burnish. Okay, this piece, I'm gonna hang it on here Actually, no, I do need to do that piece. Okay, that's dried enough. We can push this back and get our 5 8 inch score folded and burnished. So we've got our 8th inch gusset. Okay. This piece, like I said, we're going to kind of hang on there and fold it over. We're going to put glue. Okay, so here's the tab. We're folding it over this just to line it up. The glue is still going on the back side of that tab. Okay. So that when we lay this down, it's going to catch where we need it to. Okay. Get that one a second to dry. And then you can fold back your eighth inch gusset on that one as well. Okay. So, we've got that. I'm going to open this up, and then we have a small waterfall. So I have four pieces that are six by four and a half. With the four and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score these at half an inch. And I actually should not have put that one piece down yet because of matting, but you know what? It's okay. I think we're just going to go with it. Okay, since it's a waterfall, we are not going to miter. We are just going to fold and burnish. This is actually going to start right here. Okay, and it will go across like so. Okay, so I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to start with my first piece. I'm going to line it up here. Close that down over the top of it to make sure it lines up the way it's supposed to. Burnish that down. And then move on to our next piece. Okay. Again, I want to make sure that it lines up where it's supposed to. This one I am going to fold back and put on top of the other tab, um, which the way we're going to have to map this, I suppose it really doesn't matter, but it's going to make it just kind of all lay a little bit better. Okay. All right. So this one goes like so. This one goes here. This piece is right, and I don't think it is. I think I need to fix that one. Um, actually, you know what? I kind of like it that way. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. I think I'm not. Gonna, I don't think I'm going to put these other flaps on here. So that one is done, ready to go. Other than needing magnets, which we'll do a magnet here. Let me grab my magnets again and my 
tape. And of course, you know, if you don't have magnets or you don't want to use magnets, um, of course, you're just going to do um, a ribbon closure, a swing closure, however you want to do this. Right. So there's that one that goes there. And then I'm actually going to grab slightly bigger magnets for this other piece. about right there and like that okay just that flat and there we go there is the front of page three The back of page three. Okay. We have an insert that is 10 by 10. We're going to score this at five inches and set it aside. We've got a flap that is 10 and a half by seven and a half. With the seven and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're gonna score this at half an inch. We've got a pocket that is gonna be Four and a half by eight and a half. Sorry, I had to look and make sure that sounded right. With the four and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score it half an inch. And then we're going to do a belly band that is nine and a half by four. With the nine and a half at the top of the scoreboard, I'm going to score it nine inch or sorry, half an inch, and at nine inches. Okay. So let's miter on our flaps really quickly. band <coughs> okay clearly I just did something wrong Yeah, I just scored that on the wrong side. Oh my god, I'm telling you, I just need to go back to bed. All right, so let's try that again. So the flap here is 10 and a half by seven and a half with the 10 and a half at the top of the scoreboard. You're gonna score this at half an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what? We're gonna have to trim that off because I mitered part of that that I shouldn't have mitered. That's okay because we're just going to cut this to seven and get rid of that whole piece that I scored in error, and that's okay. So, this instead, unless you want to do ten and a half by seven and a half, mine is now ten and a half by seven, which is fine. It does not matter. Okay. All right. So, the four and a half by eight and a half is going to go at the bottom. Okay. 
In this one, we're going to do a magnet, and I have an element that I did with the Cricut that's actually going to sit on top of this after it's matted. Okay. And then the page on the other side has the other piece of this that goes with it. Okay, so our flap. Top is just centered up up here. Okay. And then our belly band is just going to go right across the middle. Easy peasy. If I could ever get the orientation on something correct. Keep trusting myself to remember and that I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna put this about here in the middle and that will go down like so. That will go here, this will go here. We will do a magnet underneath there. I think I'm gonna use my big ones again. here like so our other one lined up put that up out of the way and put that down okay so there we go page Two, no, three is ready to go in the book as well. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and fold our insert and burnish that and set that to the side. Okay, page four, front. Okay, this is where we're going to get a little bit tricky again. Okay. So, what we're going to do. We've got a pocket. Pocket's the easy part. Okay. The pocket is going to be nine and a half by four and a half. We're going to score this at half an inch on three sides. Okay. Two short sides, one long side. I'm going to go ahead and miter this. ready to go. And then I want a piece of acetate that is four by nine and a half. Okay. We're going to score this at half an inch and acetate. Of course, you want to go over it with a fair amount of force a few times. Okay. All right, we're going to miter the corners on the acetate as well. Okay, now you guys saw my rainbow book the other day and I had that little hot air balloon that was sliding up and down. We're going to do basically the same thing, only I've got a ship sticker here that we will end up backing on cardstock. And we're going to do the same thing, only it's going to go side to side. So I'm going to lay my little wave element on here. And I'm going to kind of eyeball about where it needs to go, okay? And it actually needed to be slightly longer, but I am not cutting this again. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I'm actually gonna flip this over to the back side. And 
and I'm going to mark, I'm just going to put a dot where my high points are. Okay, and I'm going to put a dot on the bottom where that's covered. Okay, now this is where you have a choice. If you want to, I probably need to change this a bit because it's really dull. Let me figure out where my head they are. I'm going to change my Cricut knife really quick. So what you're going to need to decide is if you want to do this straight or if you want to try to do this in like kind of a wave. Okay. I think, just me personally, I think I'm going to do a wave. And I just put the Sharpie down. There it is. Okay. All right. So we have a fresh blade. We have some dots where things are going to go. Okay. I'm going to lay this actually kind of back like so. And I really don't know which way I want to do this. I think I'm going to just kind of go. No. Let me back up a second. Let me go ahead and get my ship that I'm using. And a scrap of the cardstock over here. They're like tucked back in here, way further back than they should be. Nope, there. this up and then I'm gonna cut fussy cut around this fairly close to the edge okay now if I'd really been on top of things I would have done this with the scanning cut but it's kind of buried behind my doodlebug design team stuff that needs a home, which is why I'm trying to get this one done so that I can spend Memorial Day cleaning and finding a home for things. Um, so if you've got a scan and cut, I would do it that way. It'd be way easier, but that's okay. I don't mind the fussy cutting. Honestly, I kind of like it. It's kind of almost therapeutic, I guess. I don't know. That may just be me. I'm just going to get some of that extra off of there because it makes it easier. to do this kind of thing with like this little fingertip knife that I had. I still have one. It's over here somewhere. Um, sometimes it's still like the better option. That was how I did a lot of the ship that's in the shaker on the cover it was with that little fingertip knife. But for this, I don't think we really need to do it. Okay. So what I need to kind of decide now, I am going to lay this behind so I can line it up with my dots. Okay. 
is I need to decide where this is going to sit because what I'm probably going to end up doing is popping this that wave piece up so this will kind of sit behind it and just for simplicity sake I think I am going to do this as a straight line because that's going to be a heck of a lot easier than doing a curve and then trying to get that same curve on the other side okay so I am going to start this at the top of the waves and I'm going to start this about half an inch in. So I am just lining this up with my little dots that I made that are going to be covered up by the wave and I'm just going to kind of see where I need to start. Okay, so I'm going to start half an inch in from the score line and I'm just going to drag my blade across until I'm half an inch from the other end. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm going to go up mm, about five eighths of an inch. I know you can't really see it on the camera, but I can see through the ruler where my line is. So I can start again. And go back across and there is our little slit, okay? So now, I'm gonna put the lid on this so that I don't cut myself because otherwise that's exactly what will end up happening. And I'm going to get my score tape. I'm going to get score tape on both of my tabs here. And I'm going to grab my pocket. I'm going to fold my sides in and burnish those down. Okay. So the other piece, of course, because I wasn't thinking that far ahead that I do need to have. I do want to mat this before we put this acetate over the top, okay? Um, I'm not sure what I'm matting it with. I don't remember if I had a piece of this that was going to be the right size. Not totally. No, okay. Hold on just a minute, I apologize. I have to figure out what I'm matting this with. I'll be right back. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so I've got my matting for this. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on top of the pocket before I put the pocket down. And before I add my acetate piece. Okay. All right, so now the acetate piece, we are actually gonna wrap it around the front of the pocket. We may need to adjust this ever so slightly. Okay, so we need to actually slide that over just a hair. Occasionally, it's not the end of the world because we want this wrapped to the back side of this 
the tabs on this pocket so that it sits nice and tight across the front here, okay? I still don't have it quite where I want it, but it's close. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead with the backing off of my score tape here. I'm gonna line this up with the top of the acetate. over and then I'm going to come on this other end and do the same thing. I'm going to make sure it's lined up as flat as I can get it and again I'm burnish that down. Okay. Now, you can go ahead and put tape at the bottom of this if you wanted this to be an additional pocket on top of the pocket. I'm gonna leave it because I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it that way. I'm gonna fold that up. I'm gonna get score tape on my sides over the acetate again. That's how we're gonna have to put this sides of this pocket down. we'll go ahead and put this on the front of page four. So I am going to start with the bottom. I'm going to line this up, honestly, just a tiny bit up from the bottom so that when I put my waves and the bottom part of it kind of dips down a little bit, it's not falling, going off the edge of the page. And you are going to have to kind of put some pressure on this or some weight or something um, just to get that bottom tab to dry. And then you can go ahead and get your backing off of your score tape on both sides. Fold that in and then lay it down. Okay, so now we've got our little ship. Okay, all we're gonna do to make this slide back and forth is we're gonna take a scrap of cardstock. We're gonna figure out one for the front and one for the back. Okay, I'm going to glue it on just the bottom for now. And then you'll feed it up through. Okay. other piece on the other side here. So again, I'm just going to kind of line it up, figure out where it needs to go. And again, just a teeny bit of glue on here. Okay. And we will Feed these through, okay? So you see they're coming up through the center of that little slit that we cut. And then I'm gonna look on here and I'm going to very carefully get glue on those tabs, making sure I'm not getting too close to my acetate piece. And then there you go, there's your slider. And that will just go back and forth, okay? This piece I will end up attaching later 
with uh, foam tape and I actually may end up putting a piece of tape down there because it's not quite laying the way I want it to. Um, but it's okay because our waves are going to cover this up. So I'm just going to get this in here about like so. I'm going to cross them down and then there we go. And then this will sit on some foam tape right there. And then that will be opposite this page when it's in the book and the rest of our waves are on this other side. So there we go. Set my waves aside for now. And let me get reset and we'll do our last page elements. Okay, back of page four, we have a base piece that is nine and a half by seven. We're gonna score this at half an inch and at nine inches. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and miter. Essentially going to be kind of a really wide belly band if you wanted to tuck things underneath it. But this is mostly here just to help another element slide. So I'm just going to center that up and put that down. Okay. Next up, we've got a pocket. Our pocket is going to be six and a half by eight with the eight inch at the top. We're going to score it half an inch, turn, half an inch again, turn, and half an inch. Okay. And miter through the score lines at the bottom and then miter our top. Okay. And fold and burnish. on the outside edge. Okay, I'm actually going to flip this open to make sure I'm lining it up right so that it's sitting nice and flat. Got three flaps. These are seven by seven and a half, seven by seven, and se six and a half by seven. So our seven by seven and a half with the seven and a half at the top, we're going to score it half an inch. Our seven by seven, you're going to score it half an inch. Our six and a half by seven, you're going to put the six and a half at the top and score it half an inch. Okay, you're going to miter. And then we are going to fold and burn. 
burnish. Okay, and then we're gonna stack these together. Okay, so I'm taking my folded edge, lining them up on the board, and then I'm gonna clip these together. Okay. Okay. I'm going to fold those all in and make sure it's lined up together the way I want it so that that folded edge is all aligned together. Okay. And then what we're going to do is get glue on the first two tabs okay I'm going to squeeze that together and this is where I need clips okay so I'm not going to use those because I can't use them hopefully my little Quilt clips are strong enough. I think they're going to be just fine. So I'm going to clip that together like so, so it can dry for a minute. Okay. This is all going to go down on this side. Okay. Then you're going to have two pieces that are one inch, one inch by 12, one inch by seven. And we are going to feed this through like so. Okay. But before we do that, I'm going to take the 12 by 1 by 12, that is, and I am going to score this at two and a half inches and two and three eighths. I'm going to turn it back around. And again at two and a half and two and three eighths. Okay, so this is going to give us an eighth of an inch gusset on either end. But we want to test before we actually put our other piece on to seal it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull those clips off because this should be dry. Okay. Everything's good, it's aligned. That's good. All right, so we're going to glue this on the opposite end. Okay, and now this is kind of trying to lift on this one corner, so I'm going to fix that really quickly. All right, so now I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna feed it underneath everything, okay? Bring it up and over and make sure we've got enough of a gusset that this is gonna slide, which it seems like it's okay, so this is good, okay? I'm just gonna get it kind of centered here. I'm gonna take one, of my, one end of my one inch by seven, I'm going to line it up on top of this little band, okay? Going all the way to the end, lining it up. We're doing it this way because we're going to be better able to, it's just going to be easier to assemble it doing it this way with it on top, okay? And there, and again, we're just going to make sure we're good side to side. And there we go. So this will slide to this side. And then you'll have your reverse waterfall and a pocket sitting on top of what is essentially kind of a big belly band, which is fine. Okay, there you go. That is the back of page four. And at this point, I would suggest 
doing your your basic matting on all of these. Um, and then coming back and then we'll put them in the book. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. And when I come back, we'll go ahead and get these in the book and then you're done. Okay, so for the, let me turn that back on before I try to use it and it's not on. <laughs> um, for the front around the, um, the, uh, there we go, um, shaker. So I've got this um, jute twine that I've gone around the outside edge and the inside edge. <clears throat> and then I have this chiffon ribbon that was out of my stash that what I've done is I've taken a length of it and I've just made knots every like inch or so. So what we're going to do is we're going to start down in this corner and this is going to run kind of around like this. And I, I, I struggled with this for the last you know, day or so trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. And I, when I real remembered that I had this, I was like, well, it would kind of mimic like a sail. So that was kind of the, um, idea behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and some glue down right there, tuck that piece under, and I'm just going to glue where ever one of the knots is going to land. You could do this if you had, if I'd had like some thicker like rope or twine that, you know, was very similar to um, the uh, this that I used around the edges, I probably would have gone that route. In fact, that would be a good alternative. Ah, and we're getting glue everywhere. Be cleaning up glue trails for days at this point, but that's okay. This turned around, so I'm aimed at the area, aimed at, good hell, facing <laughs> the area I'm trying to work on. I'm telling you, it's been a week <laughs> and it's Tuesday. Um, And I'm not sure how much of this I actually ended up using. Probably at least maybe a yard. Um, it was something that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby about a month or so ago. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. It was just kind of neat. <laughs> and the package that I got came in gray and black and I kind of debated back and forth and decided the gray was what I wanted because it kind of matched the sails on the ship inside the shaker and I know I talked about this you know being a newer thing out um, at Home Depot and it's not a high temp glue gun which is good because it would melt the acetate, <laughs> which is the only hesitation I had to using um, some kind of hot glue with um, attaching all of my little pieces and parts here. But that was a pleasant surprise actually, that it is not a high temp, it is a low temp glue gun, which is exactly what you would want for something like this. Okay, so then this last one is going to come down like so, and I think I'm actually going to cut this a 
off. I'm gonna have to glue it like right almost under his tail. And then I'll just snip this off there and I only had a tiny bit extra. So um, the only other thing I think I might add is I do have pearls. Um, this was Prima that was available in the store at Country Craft Creations last year. I don't know if any of this is still available, but um, I've used these on a couple of different projects over the last year or so. And they're really awesome. So I think I'm going to just fill in some pearls here and there. Um, other than that, that is pretty much, pretty much it. There's our shaker. Um, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you end up making this project, even if you simplify the shaker, even if you make it smaller, if you make it, if you do anything even remotely inspired by this, please share it with me on my page, Scrapping Under the Influence. You can also tag me on Instagram at Scrapping Under the Influence, or you can join my group Scrap Happy Peeps and anything you make, whether it's my tutorials, your own creation, somebody else's tutorials, it doesn't even have to be paper crafts. If you want to share it with a bunch of other crafty people, by all means, go over there, join the group and share what you've been making. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.